We're going to start the webinar now. First and foremost, welcome to today's webinar event. My name is Sean Kozak and I am the founder of Neural Streets Trading Academy and I will be your host today. <laughs> the main thing we're going to be doing today is we're going to be kicking off this two-day order flow and volume profile boot camp that we've basically put together so that we can essentially teach you how to profit from both order flow and volume analysis. Now, for those of you that were in the event yesterday, type a Y in the chat box if you found it informative, you learned something and you enjoyed it. Uh, I know there was a lot of you guys there and, and uh, I'm glad you guys got a chance to join us. For those of you that did not join us yesterday, don't worry, rest assured, we did record it and we will send it out to you guys. Uh, as always, we will put that out on our channels and we will send them out for you guys via email so you guys can learn that as well. Um, but I'm just glad you're here today. So let's kick things off. First and foremost, we are recording this event. We will send you both recordings after the boot camp is finished. Um, today's focus is going to be on volume analysis uh, only. And then we're going to go into the details of the topics. And, and we've got some really new things to cover. I've got some new stuff I want to share with you and, and, and so forth. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the chat box. In these types of events, I find there's a lot more questions because they're educational in nature. So a lot of traders tend to ask questions throughout the, throughout the event. Rest assured, I do see them coming in. And if I don't answer them right away, I will pause periodically and go back to them when I get a chance to, and we'll cover them after. So don't think I'm ignoring you if I don't get to it right away. Okay. And uh, also on top of that, if you can't stay throughout the entire event, no worries, you're here now. And uh, we will be putting out some special offers uh, and we will be giving out discounts for the tool sets that we're using. So we will send you those if you can't be here to the end of the event. So now that we got all that stuff out of the way, guys, need to cover a quick disclaimer because we are talking about Wall Street and trading and all that fun stuff. And ultimately, <laughs> you know, there are risks in the business apparently, and we need to be aware of them. We need to understand them. And I cannot guarantee you future profits. It is not my job to do so. I can only show you what we do. We are an educational provider. That being said, let's kick things off. So we're going to go into uh, ultimately why we'd want to adopt these types of strategies and, and talk about them. Uh, I think it's really, really important to kind of ask ourselves the questions why we would look into these types of strategies. We're going to talk about uh, profile composites. And then what I'd like to do is I'd like to teach you how to look at manual profile analysis. So a lot of times we'll have a chance to be able to go into the data when we need to or not. Uh, that's what that is for. We're going to talk about it. We're going to go into uh, micro bar analysis. Micro bar analysis is the study of volume profiles on a bar by bar basis. And a lot of times what that involves is cluster analysis, volume cluster analysis, looking at patterns in the volume, et cetera, et cetera. And the main reason here is, is to kind of help you guys understand what's happening on a, on a micro level. Now, my favorite topics here are volume divergence. Uh, I really, really love the concept of volume divergence. I think it's very powerful when used correctly. And it's very powerful on multiple time frames. So it really doesn't matter if you're using big time frames or small time frames. It's a very powerful concept. So what I want to do is I've developed a strategy. And this strategy is actually taught in our mastermind and in our programs. And I've decided to release it to everybody here today because I felt that if you're going to get something worthwhile, let's teach an actionable trading system that can be used for you guys to move forward with and actually uh, take advantage of should you choose to use the tools that we're trading with. And, and I'd like to go into some details in that. We're going to take a look at some examples and, and show some actionable examples, right? I think that's the, that's, the, that's the main thing here. Now, we are running a discount, a pretty substantial price drop. So for those of you that are interested in what we're doing today, we will be providing an offer at the end of the event. I just want to get that out of the way now, uh, because in order to do these types of tools, we do need to be able to use indicators and these indicators are like driving Ferraris. <laughs> okay. So that being said, let's kick things off. How many of you guys are ready? We're going to get into this. I hope you got a notepad. I hope you got a screenshot. So you got a little snippet tools, whatever you guys do to take notes. We are ready to rock and roll. Give me, a, give me a why in the chat box that we're ready to go out with Friday with a bang. You guys ready for it? We're good to go? Excellent. Excellent. 
For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Sean. I am the I am the owner of Neural Street, and um, you know the reason I like to lead with this is because you know there's a lot of great content out on the online space. There's a lot of great influencers. There's a lot of great educational providers. Uh, I, I have a lot of respect for people that actually spend a lot of time teaching valid concepts, but what qualifies me to be here is that, you know, I, I'm very fortunate to be able to work in something I'm passionate about, but reality is I've traded in front of an audience for a very long time. Um, I've done very well. I've struggled at times. I've traded in big run-ups. I've had big drawdowns. I've traded out of drawdowns. I've traded SIM accounts, live accounts, managed money, uh, you name it. Um, ultimately, I've been around the block, guys. I've developed over 40 products on three platforms. I have an in-house development team. I've been coding algorithms on, on multiple platforms for about 10 years. So I know a little bit about trading, just a little bit. Um, I don't claim to be the best trader, but I definitely know what I'm doing to be here to help you guys. And I can assure you this, that uh, my biggest passion is seeing you guys succeed. Um, I, I, I mentioned yesterday I had a trader, and I'll say this again in case you weren't here, but I had a student yesterday that kind of emailed me. I, I, we have guys that we coach and we have guys that we talk about, and uh, not everybody succeeds in this business. I know everybody wants to succeed. The truth of the matter is that it's a very hard industry to become very successful in, and, and that's why we got to spend a lot of time working at it. But the truth of the matter is that a success is possible. I had a, I had a student of mine email me uh, this week, and he, he, you know, when he came to us, he'd blown out three accounts. I worked with him for a period of 12 weeks and he's now trading into his third funded account. He's, he's funded two combines with two separate funding companies. Now he's funding a third one and uh, he hasn't looked back. Right. So, you know, uh, and, and I'm actually going to have him come in and, and potentially do a, a, another event with us. He's spoken before on the mic with us. We've brought him in on a, on a, on occasion before, but you know, I can help you. We can help you. These things can definitely help you. So hopefully after today's event, you know, we can get at least another few success stories under our, our, our belts and hope you guys, you know, take some of these things that we're teaching you and, and, and put it to use, right? That's, that's, the, that's the plan here, guys, right? So um, first thing I want to talk about is, you know, why we want to consider the stuff that I'm talking about today. So have you guys ever heard of leading and lagging analysis? Give me a yes if you've heard of the concept of leading indicators versus lagging indicators. Yes? Okay. What, what defines a lagging indicator? Can you guys tell me that? Like what, what is ultimately a lagging indicator? Anything, you know, like the reason I, I think the, the reason, this may sound basic in nature, but it's the truth of the matter is, is that we need to understand this. Richard says, one that informs us after they've happened yeah, price has to move before it can show result. Yes. So a lagging indicator, okay, there's a time and a place, okay, there's a time and a place for indicators, and there's a time and a place for volume. To me, before I started in this business, I had no clue about volume. I think I had an instructor once have it on a sub panel on his chart and he talked about it once or twice on a daily time frame. But I had no understanding of what was going on in the markets with volume or I didn't know what liquidity was and high liquidity and low liquidity. And, but through the evolution of my career and through working with thousands of students, you know, I've spent a lot of time studying volume. And the concept about volume is really about understanding what, what's going on in the market. Um, have you guys ever heard the, the term volume leads price? Have you guys ever heard that? Volume leads price? Me, yes, if you guys have ever heard that. Murdy says yes. Okay. Well, the reality is volume leads price because the the fact is we're trading in we're trading in an institutional business marketplace. So let me kind of explain this. Um, I'm going to draw a little bit of a hierarchy here so that you guys understand this. This is you guys and me over here. I'm just, and, and it has no relevance to these pictures, but just, just keep your eyes up here for a second. This is you and me and everybody in this room together and probably everybody in all of our cities combined that have active trading accounts. Okay. These are the prop shops. Okay. These are the money managers. Okay. These are the hedge funds, 
okay? Then we got a whole different realm of people, right? Then we got some banks, and then we've got some institutions. And then we've got the big institutions, the ones that move 10, you know, 90% of the money around, okay? If these guys move 90% of the liquidity around in the market, then every one of these guys and even these guys are paying attention to what these guys are doing. So whose industry are we really working in? The big banks, not the institution, not the banks, not the funds, not the hedge funds, not the money managers, none of those guys. The big banks, the top 10 institutions in the world that move the money. Not all of the institutions, because those guys are still looking at the top 10. Okay, so why do I say this? Because in order for these guys, okay, over here, these big guys to move a market, because that's what, they're, that's what we're in, we're in their market, the only thing that is on their radar is volume. Can I ask you guys why that would be important? Why do you think the only thing on their radar is volume, first and foremost? Help me out here, guys. I'm asking you. Can you guys hear me okay? To show market interest, Richard says. Because the only way that these guys can do business is by understanding where they can actually do business. Murdy nailed it, Wayne nailed it. The key word is liquidity, okay? The key word is liquidity. And this is the entire focus of today's webinar is liquidity, liquidity. In order for them to move money around, okay? In order for them to move money around, liquidity must be there for them to do business. And then once they can identify where they're doing business, they can move prices from point A to point B, right? Spike, they, have, they have so much money that they have to be actually specific and strategic with where they want to do business. That's exactly it. And it's not a bad thing to understand that. It's actually really important that we as retail traders learn this early on in our careers because, you know, the point of the matter is, I'll give you an example, right? On, this is like, let's say, a, this is maybe like a six range chart, right? This could be like a six range day trading chart over here, right? And we got this range right here, right? Well, what this is, is churn, on big money movement. That's all it is. Buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling with big, big, big orders in order for them. They started selling here, they started buying here, they started selling there, they started buying here, they started selling there, they started buying there. But the net relationship to all this environment was buying of the big banks. Okay. And that's what happens on a smaller time frame. We see that. And then as a result of big bank buying, the market goes up, right? And then they go there because that was where they were trying to move price. And then they, the same thing happens, big churn in the market happens. But, but really what it's doing is it's creating liquidity pockets in the market. So, you know, and us as retail day traders, we've got our signals and we've got our trend lines and we've got all this other stuff that happens because we're trying to get involved with the movement of what they're doing. But reality is, is that we first need to understand where they're going to be doing that information. We need to see in advance where they're doing those things and how they're doing those things and how we can use tools to identify that to take advantage. Do we need to trade like them? Not necessarily. We just need to know when they're going to be involved and why they're going to be involved and what they're doing at certain things so that we get a better understanding of that. And the only indicator that will ever do that is volume because moving averages, VWAP, momentum, even anything to do with indicators, um, anything to do with anything that relies on price is dependent on volume. So when people say I'm a price action trader, price action actually comes after volume. So price is actually second to, to volume. You can't move price until volume creates liquidity.
and the order flow is the study of inside of that volume. So it's kind of order flow and volume kind of go hand in hand. Does everybody understand that? So yes, we're gonna look at some tools today and we're gonna look at some concepts today, but it's all based off volume driven analysis. Some of it macro in nature, some of it micro in nature so that we can go in and we can, we can break that down, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go in and we're gonna talk about composites first. So one of the things that we can do um, with the tool set that we're demonstrating for this boot camp is we have the ability to create composite profiles. Now composite profiles can be done based off of two things. You can do a full composite for the day or you can break down composites over periodicity which means if let's say we have a day composite, so this would be a complete session, 24 hour session, right? So what that means is from the Globex open all the way to the close of the market, right? Whereas over here, what we can do is we can say, well, I wanna break down profiles every 60 minutes or every 90 minutes or every 30 minutes. Okay, I have the ability to do that, right? And, 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 and when, what, what, what can be the advantage to that? <laughs> well, it, it really just depends on your nature of trading. Um, the concept around profile composites is ultimately to do with um, the way in which you want to deploy volume strategies. So what I wanna do is I wanna go onto a chart right now. I wanna show you what that looks like. So what we did yesterday is we talked about the, the order flow. We talked about the, the dome. We talked about the tape, right? The time and sales. But today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about just volume profile analysis. Okay, so I'm gonna close all this up over here. And this is a chart of the S&P. Let me turn some stuff off here. We're gonna start one thing at a time. Okay, so if I'm looking at the S&P here, and I'm looking at a price chart. This is a five minute chart of the S&P. I'm just using this as an example here. Okay, we've got a couple days of data. Well, I can turn the session breakers on inside of my, I can turn the session breaks on and I'm using the Ninja platform. If you're not using Ninja Trader, that's fine. Uh, this is designed for Ninja Trader. Okay, this is designed for Ninja Trader. Um, there is tools that can use volume, not to the extent we're gonna be doing today, but there are volume tools out there. Ninja has a basic volume profile tool set inside of it as well. If you look, you can see here there's a, there's a, an, a, uh, an order flow volume profile and they've got, a, they've got that there, but that's all that it has and you can only change the colors on it and, and that's it, right? You can, you can draw a profile on your chart, okay? And that's, that's good for starting and it's really good for getting started in the platform. But what we're gonna be doing today is, is very, very big in nature compared to this in terms of the features and the, the ability for us to do some custom stuff. It's very, very powerful, okay? <laughs> so what I wanna do here is I wanna basically explain what a composite profile is. A composite profile is where I have the ability to go in and turn profiles on for every single day. And this allows me to go in and, and really customize things such as if I wanna show it as a shape or I wanna show it as histogram bars. Okay, the shape can be quite graphically appealing to a lot of traders because it's actually easier for us to see the nodes. So the reason I designed it like this is because a lot of traders are visual in nature and it has the ability for us to go in and study the volume nodes more efficiently. Now, explaining what this means is really important here because the purpose of a composite profile is to be able to study the volume analysis for the entire day. Now there's, there's a few things that I want to do here is I wanna talk about what's really important when you study volume analysis. And we're gonna go and we're gonna just type this here. So the components are, components are, You've got the value area high, the value area low, the point of control, the value area, okay? And then the two most important things you wanna understand is high volume nodes and low volume nodes, okay? So we're gonna talk about these things here. We're gonna talk about this for a second. So inside of this, inside of a profile, okay? 
<laughs> when we go in and we turn on the settings, I have the ability to go in here and turn uh, levels on, okay? Labels on, you can turn levels on, et cetera, et cetera, okay? <laughs> what this is, is ultimately, I'm just taking the components of this profile and I'm basically using our software to identify the value area high, the value area low. And this is for the day, the full day auction, okay? The point of control. I actually have the VWAP in here. I forgot to write the VWAP. And the concept about this is anything above the value area high is considered expensive for the day. Anything below the value area low is considered cheap for the day. Because in terms of an auction, we need to understand what's really expensive and what's really cheap. Because you wanna be thinking like a bank, like buying low and selling high and vice versa. Now it's not as simple as that. And I, and, and I don't think that trading can be as simple as that. It's not as cookie cutter as that. If everybody, if everybody, if everybody looked at the value rate low and said, oh, it's cheap, we're gonna buy there. <laughs> that'd be the holy grail, the market. But we need to start understanding that as prices are going below value, they're getting, they're getting less and less expensive and prices are going above value, they're getting more and more expensive. Now, the reason we do this is really just to kind of create a roadmap for ourselves. But more importantly, the most important thing for me to teach you in here is understanding the relationship between high value, high volume and low volume data, okay? So high, vo high volume and low volume data is the study of the liquidity. Remember we talked about today, about, remember we talked about, well, we actually talked about um, liquidity as being the most important thing in the marketplace, right? Liquidity is really about knowing what they're doing. And when it comes to liquidity, 70% of the volume is in here, okay? But if you notice, there's some pretty heavy volume down here. Okay, there's some really heavy volume down here. There was some heavy volume in the middle. Okay, in today, there was some heavy volume in the middle today. And that's really the only thing that I see here that stands out in terms of volume analysis on today's auction. There's two places where really, really strong volume actually played out. And I'm gonna go in here and turn the, the, the levels off. And I just want to kind of map out what, what that tells us, right? If I, if I go in here and I see, you can see the nodes in here. And I, I really want you to be understanding of what's, what do you think is the most important part of the liquidity process? Let's just do it like this. So you can, and, I, and, I, and I really want to just take one profile for a second and teach you a concept. What is the most important part, do you think, if liquidity is the most important part, then what, on, what, are, what are we doing Liquidity equals important, okay? So if I need to look for important places on a profile, what do you think those places would be then? High volume or low volume important places? What do you think would be more important then? If liquidity is important, ah, Richard nailed it, high volume. Now low volume is also important, but low volume is the, the opposite of liquidity. Low volume pockets will not let the market stay there. And that's the difference. The market wants to go to liquidity pockets, but the market doesn't want to stay in, in low liquidity pockets. So if I'm going into this profile for a second, I'm just gonna go right here and just do this, because this is the day profile, so this has already happened today. If I was to take a look at, say, the three biggest nodes, okay, the three biggest nodes on this profile, we're just gonna zoom it out like this. I'm gonna draw a little horizontal line in here. We can already see that that one is the point of control, okay? And if we were to take the next biggest node above that, which one would be the best, instead of being right in the middle, this one up here would be pretty big, okay? This, this one over here is, is pretty solid. It's, it's a pretty big node, okay, right here. It's the second biggest node inside of the value area. And then if we look down here below, there's another big belly down here. I'm just taking the biggest nodes realistically right there. And then there's one real big one down here. And the real, and if we look at the biggest peak inside of that, the biggest peak is 
right there. Okay. It's probably borderline. It's very, very close to that one. You could argue that was the biggest peak too. Does everybody understand what I've just done? I just mapped out the three price points that this entire day, okay, is, is identifying as important places. Okay. So I, I need you to understand what, what's happening here. I need you to understand what volume is going to tell you. Okay, so if I have a level, any level, any level, this can act as support or resistance. Does everybody understand this? Whenever you have a level in the market, if prices are up here, this level will become what? Support or resistance? Support. Perfect. If prices are down here, then if price comes up here, what is it going to be? Resistance. Okay. So if you know that these areas are areas of interest, then we need to understand how prices are responding to those areas, okay? Because if we're looking at price down here and price is coming down to it, it's going to act as support. If price breaks through it, 33.57 is going to act as resistance. Price comes up. This is now acting as resistance. Does everybody see this? Because it's volume resistance. Volume is going to dictate what happens, but only at key areas. So if you're drawing your areas in the wrong location, you see this node up here is actually quite big as well. If you're drawing levels on the wrong areas of a profile, you're not going to get the right information. So if you just randomly think, well, I think that looks like an area of importance, this, 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 and that, it's not happening. Okay, You can see the reaction to the high volume peaks here. If I just draw the lines of the high volume nodes, in fact, it, even, even this one here was quite substantial. Right? You can see how the market responds. If price comes to it, perfect, test it. Price breaks through it, reacts to it, reacts to it, reacts to it. React breaks through it, comes up, reacts to it. This one didn't get reacted here, but it did on the way back down, right? Now, the reason I don't like to draw every single peak is because that's what happens. You never know if one's going to blow through the other. You only want to draw the big ones, guys, like the real, real big ones, Okay, the most important ones are the most important ones. These are the most important areas, the highest volume nodes. When price breaks through them, okay, they respond to them. You can see how price responds to the high volume nodes. Okay, and I, I just want you to understand why that's important. Because if you're looking at today, and let's just delete all the drawings on the chart. And we're going to go back and do the same exercise because this applies. Remember, this applies to an entire day, but this also applies to historical days because at the close of today, right there, I need you to understand why this is so powerful. This needs to be the most important thing that you learn from today's webinar is that volume leads price. Now, the only thing that trumps historical volume is fundamental catalyst in the market. So today, if we had news, that's going to create different volume relationships based off of fundamentals. But then those fundamentals will come out. And then what will end up happening is you will get a reaction from that news because the financial markets is all driven from fundamental data. That's what it's designed for. If you were to study economics in university, they'll tell you the, the point of an economic market is to give you leading details of our economy. That's what economists use is they use it for leading analysis. So fundamentals will drive price. Price will then create liquidity or volume will create the movement of price. And then all of a sudden we've got patterns. Well, if I'm starting here and I'm starting here right there on the set of today, do I have any volume here to look at yet?
Yeah, exactly, Richard. I don't listen to The Economist. I look at the volume. Yeah. <laughs> but you understand that the logic behind the theory, right? So <laughs> do I have any volume at the beginning of the day? In today's, if I'm sitting right here at the front of the Globex, coming into yesterday, right down here, is there any volume there? Not a chance. So then how do we understand what the market's going to do when we get to certain locations? Hmm. Kind of important to think about, considering indicators are going to happen after the fact. Pretty much anything you draw or any levels you draw are basically subjective to our own analysis. But isn't this the study of what the banks did? Like, remember, remember what I said, like, like who moved this entire market? The S&P. Who moves the S&P? <laughs> it ain't the hedge funds. <laughs> so if I were to sit here and just literally just take a look at these high volume nodes. Well, Gabe, that's the whole point of this discussion. We're going to talk about this for a second. Isn't this a high volume node right here? Pretty significant node. Okay. If we go into this data and we take a look at the most, the most significant node in this entire region is here. Just the high volume node. I just want you to pay attention to this node for a second. Okay. Yes, there's other nodes. Yes, there's other nodes, but it's the most significant. Uh, this one here and this one here are pretty freaking close, right? This one here and this one here are really freaking close. Like we're talking like within one tick. So I would say that's entire, it's a big node, <laughs> but those are two of the exact same price levels, okay? And then down here at the close of the day, this is the node right here. Yeah? So I would pretty much bank my career on it that if the market gets up to those levels <laughs> that it's pretty important okay now this is not a trading strategy yet yet but it's important that you learn this because if you think about it if the market can't stay in this area of volume okay and it wants to trade higher then it's going gonna, it's gonna to face reactions here. It's going to get reactions. Like you're going to get like, cha, 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 like you might get some, but it's going here. Like it has to go here. Why would it want to go there? If it can't stay here, like if it can't stay in this area, why can't it stay there? Zero liquidity. Liquidity's down here. Liquidity's down here. Liquidity's down here. And I don't mean there's not enough liquidity. There's a pretty big note here and it's in between them, but okay. If, when, when I say liquidity, I mean as a market entity, like the entire market can't stay there. Okay. If the market can't stay somewhere, it has to go somewhere else because that's the flow of capital. That's the whole point of understanding volume is that if the market can't stay down in here, which is this liquidity information in here, it's either going to go down and find historical profiles, which we haven't looked at yet, or it's going to go up and find liquidity. Does everybody understand that? So let's just kind of take a look at what took place in here. I don't know if it got all the way up there. It may not have got up there yet. It came back down to that level though, did it not? Like, do you notice what happened here if we got above that area? Like I drew that level here, okay? 
We did not get up. There was a point of liquidity here that got rejected, but to me, it's a small node. So it's just a bunch of noise in the overnight session. Like to me, if you notice the price action here as it grinded through this volume area, like it just was trying to grind through here and it hit the wall here. There's a wall of volume. This is like a big wall of volume. It hit the wall and that's what we call hitting the wall. And when we hit the wall, the market's going to determine, is it going into the liquidity or is this going to become a low volume rejection? And it was a low volume rejection out of the wall. And so that's what happened here. They hit the wall of volume. We tested it several times. The market couldn't stay there. And the reason for that is because the market's been quite bearish. So anytime the market goes into resistance on the wall, it's going to get slammed. But I want you to pay attention to the level we drew down at the bottom here, because we drew that over here at the beginning of the Globex. And the market never came down to test it, did it? Never came down to touch it once all night and then all of a sudden at 10 o'clock this morning they came down and tested it did they not significant important information that you need to learn how to draw your high volume nodes on a profile composite i'm serious guys it's the most important thing you're going to learn in the market is where the big boys are going to test support or resistance on point of controls and there's several point of controls in one day actually every major high liquid pocket in the market has a point of control of, of areas of interest. And if we break below it, it's going to act as resistance. You notice how I didn't move my, move my line around because this was a significant place yesterday. It became a significant place today. And remember we did about the level, once it becomes support, it becomes resistance. I didn't move my levels. I didn't move anything. I just, this became resistance. Yes? Significant resistance. That's a five minute chart down to 3320. That's 20 points. From a day trader's perspective, it's quite significant. Okay. So first of all, did that make sense to you? So notes, let's take some notes. We're going to do some volume notes. Very important. Volume notes from today's class. Number one, point of controls, all must be located from prior day's auctions. Above or below price. Now, I would I would look at the prior days or a couple days. You know, yet we had we had this one here, but realistically, like they came down to test this one over here. I would look to go down here and see where the high volume was in this volume here. I'd have to expand the chart out a bit, but realistically, there was some high volume in there to look at as well. And the thing about this here, guys is that you just need to know where the nodes are because they're gonna act as support or resistance, okay? Now, this is based off of a full composite auction. If I wanted to go in here and break down the day like this and go in here to what we call time composites, I can actually do this on a more smaller term basis throughout the day because depending on your nature of a trader will determine how big of an auction you want to look at. Not everybody's waiting all day for a level to get there. So sometimes you want to be a little bit more responsive to intermediate movements of the nodes. So what I would do is you could go and turn this to time. And then ultimately I set it to start at 930 in the morning, market open. And then I'm saying every 60 minutes, I want you to give me a note. Give me a, give me a new profile. Okay, now that's, to me, that's a little bit noisy, okay? To a scalper, it's, it's a paradise, right? To a, to a scalper, it's a paradise. So let's just kind of go in here for a second and, and, and take a look at what this looks like. It doesn't look so noisy when you expand it out, no? So what I would do is that every time I had a new profile, let's just go one at a time, okay? If I have a new profile, like this, you can draw them on top too. One of the things you can do is draw on top so you can see the nodes, you can hide the, you can change the colors too guys. I know red bar with a red, red volume is kind of hard to see, but realistically, where is the highest volume node in this profile? 
that's the most important part. Like I would map out the highest volume node below price, above price, and in the middle. I would take three nodes and I would try to draw, this is the highest volume node here, okay? This is the highest volume node inside of here. Mm, yes. And this is the highest volume node down here. So depending if I'm scalping, price gets down to this area. Okay, this acted as support in here. We did not get quite down to it. See how there's a big node it got stuck on in here. And I would look at the historical nodes of every, and see how price got above that area, okay? Now as a day trader, as a day trader, depending on how much movement you're looking for, depending on what you want to do, remember these are all support and resistance levels. So I'd be looking at, if you take a look at here, when we price got back down to this, this is support. So this becomes a support level, price came above it, tested it. You see this? As a directional trader, that's a scalp trade on high volume nodes. This is how you can use the composites to look at every historical, you can't use the current profile, it's changing. It's changing. So until we get a new profile right there, what I'd be doing is I'd be looking at the prior auction. Okay, I'd be looking at the prior auction and I would want to see the highest node, okay? And what's nice about this is I can already tell you the highest nodes here just by looking at the volume. I, I personally like this mode better because I can actually see the colors of the cluster and stuff. So do the composite profiles use the overnight? Well, Richard, you can set it up to whatever you want. It's, it's a time setting. So you can set the time, you can set the, whether it's a full session or a composite or a time. Yeah, you have that flexibility to do that. So let's take a look at this. This is clearly a node. And this is a boot camp guy. So I'm slowing things down here a bit. I'm going into charts to kind of explain this, right? I, I, and that's the purpose of a training webinar on a Friday. I'm going to give you guys actionable strategies so you can use this for. So if I got a, a, a point of control tool, there's a, there's a point of control here. Okay, there's still a high volume node down here that was never tested on that area, okay, after the new profile started. And up here, this is, this is a high volume node, but that's the highest volume node, okay? So when price comes into these areas, this is, this is pretty significant for us to pay attention to, okay? You can see price came right into that node here. So price came into 3340, but it went up to 3345, right and and uh you know that's a move as a day trader you know that that's a move right there that that is a reaction of price that can profit you as a day trader depending on your objectives what we would do at the close of this session here at the at the close of this profile i would come in here i would say okay we have a new profile i would want to map this out in here i would want to map out the highest volume node in fact i would really only be more concerned with the highest volume node of every hour so that to me is more of this one here this is the highest volume node and we have the, the ability to map that out okay remember this became resistance as it broke through as the new profile starts down here okay let's go back one more and this is just how to use this to your advantage right here so at the next bar we're going to see that this is the highest volume node in here and this is what you can do at a, as a smaller time frame day trader in here. That's the highest volume node in here. So when price gets up to it, look at this. It came up on that. It's an hour profile on a five minute chart. And you can do this on any time frame, anything you want to do. But it's really dependent on how granular you want to get with the, with the nodes. Look at it. Came right up into that node and it reacted all the way down to 3316. 3324 to 3316. Can you tell me if that's enough to make a living off of on a day trade? One a day course now i'm not saying you're going to catch the whole trade on that i'm just letting you know that that's becoming resistance you see this now what we're doing is we're taking every single hour and we're just mapping out the highest volume node of every single hour what's the value of that trade i'm not sure what you mean by that the value of that trade, I don't know what you mean by the value. The value area or the value of, I don't understand the question. Well, it depends on how much 
you're trading with. I mean, if you're looking at this from a risk reward perspective, I'd look at the ATR value, or if you're setting it, you know, you want to do a 10 tick stop or a 10 tick target. If you're trading with 10 contracts, five contracts, I'm not a money, I'm not legally allowed to tell you how much to trade with there, Richard. It's not my job to do that. But, and everybody in here has a different account anyways. It depends on, you know, that type of, that, that type of stuff. And this is just one way to look at that. So let me kind of retrain the brain for a second. Richard's nailing something on a very important topic. Let's say you got one trader, two trader, three traders. Okay. Let's say this guy wants 10 ticks, this guy wants five, this guy wants 25. Okay. Depending on if that's done over two trades, one trade, this guy wants one trade, this guy wants one trade or two trades, it really depends on you. But the concept of this is understanding that if you're breaking down a daily profile, you've got a prof you, every hour you've got a new node. So every single hour, you have the opportunity to trade the highest volume node if they come down to retest it. So if you're trading over an eight-hour day, that's eight trade potentials, right? If you're breaking this down every 30 minutes, well, then you're breaking it down 16 trade potentials. So this is just something to think about. Instead of doing a full-day auction, you could trade a point-of-control trade every single, every single hour. And, and that's just breaking down the composites over one 60-minute interval. Yeah, that's, that is, that's exactly what this is. Yes. If you take a look at this, the time setting, I set it to start at 9.30 in the morning. And the interval is I'm going to get a new profile every 60 minutes. You can actually change this. You could actually change this to, to be every 90 minutes. You could change it to every 15 minutes. If you're a scalper and you want to trade, right? So Richard's nailing some great questions. This is not TPO, this is volume. So we are looking at volume profiles on this, not TPOs. And that's why we're not, this is not called splitting, this is called new auction theory. So splitting is where we split market profile and we split it based off value area shifts. Do you notice how this value area is still inside the prior value area? It has nothing to do with shifting value. That's exactly it. That's the volume profile for the hour, yeah? And Richard's asking some great questions, which is why I'm stopping and we're going over this, right? This is the, these are the, the profile for every single hour. Yeah, I'm glad you guys understood that. Everybody with me here? Richard's, give everybody, a, give Richard a round of applause because when he asks intelligent questions, I like that. Two separate products, two separate tools designed for two separate things. Right, the macro profile software is designed for P TPO analysis and market profile and volume profile. This is strictly volume, strictly volume. Okay, guys. So let's get back on track here for a second and kind of talk a little bit about this because we've really kind of nailed into some great concepts. But this is an example of volume analysis on a profile auction. Okay, so take a look here. What happened when we came back to the next? auction. This was the point of control. Remember when we got above it? Did it not act as support? Okay. So what I'm going to do is we're going to stop there for a second. I think there's a great enough concept for you uh, to do this. Okay. I'll go over questions after guys. We're gonna stick on topic because I wanna make sure I get through this, okay? So if using time interval profiles, you can set the volume to, to create new, prof new profiles every specified fractal. So like 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, et cetera, right? Everybody makes sense on that? So all that means is you, you have the flexibility to choose that. You can literally choose that. And all we're doing is we're saying that we're going to trade support or resistance on the highest volume node every hour on the hour, be, depending on if we're above or below it. 
right? And that's a strategy in and of itself. It can be very sufficient strategy. In fact, if we were to go back and look at every time we got below or above that, take a look. <laughs> Support. Like it's a very it's a very efficient way of looking at volume, guys. I really think that the point of control of concept is a very efficient way of looking at volume. Okay, we're going to talk about it more and more. Um, that being said, guys, let's go back into the deck here and talk about developing profiles. One of the issues with volume is that you can't back test it. Well, at least a lot of other people can. We can. <laughs> I built the tool so that we can look at dynamic volume analysis, which means we can go back and we can study how the volume unfolded, okay? So unlike every single platform out there that looks at volume as it's happening, we have what we call developing profiles. And developing profiles is really, really good for people to want to backtest volume. Now, if you're somebody that likes to back test your strategies and you're like, well, volume is always changing. How can I do that? It's next to impossible unless you have what we call a developing profile. Now, a developing profile will tell me the value area high, the value area low, the VWAP, the point of control, the value areas. But do you see how they're moving? Like this blue line is the VWAP. This green staggered line is the value area. This yellow staggered line is the point of control. And what that tells us is where the volume was as the volume changed. So we can go back and see all of the trade locations on these areas. So I can go back and turn on the settings for a second. We'll go back to a full day profile. Okay. And I have the ability to turn on developing profiles to see how the volume unfolded throughout the day. And the reason this is really powerful is because the value areas are always changing. And you can do this on a time interval too. So if you wanted to go back and back test your, if you wanna go back and back test the, the incremental volume like we just explained, you could do that. This is really designed to kind of go back and see where because if I take a look at the VWAP, if I, if I just turn this to the standard profile, okay, if I look at where the, the value area low is for the day now, the value area low is for the day is right here, which is lined up with right here. But the value area low was here all day. This was the value area low all day as the market changed, which allows us to really go in and see the dynamic aspect of how volume changed. Now, this is really meant for people who are serious about going back and statistically making sure that they're not cheating themselves when looking at the volume strategies. Because it's very easy for people to go in and, and mislead their own thinking and saying, oh, I would have taken that trade and I would have taken that trade. But you really wouldn't have in real time. Right, And I think that it's really important to be able to understand how to look at volume from an objective perspective, not a subjective one. There's nothing worse than cherry picking trades. There's nothing worse than that because then we're, we're, doing, we're, so we're, do, we're doing ourselves a disservice, right? And what I wanna do is I wanna talk a little bit about, uh, I wanna talk a little bit about this, okay? Now, what we just did with the time intervals is we, we actually, we actually uh, were breaking it down by the hour for this example. But we also have the ability to go and draw profiles anywhere we want on the chart so that we can go in and assess key areas of interest. So what, I would, what I'm gonna do is I wanna teach you how to do this efficiently, okay? First and foremost, you want to look at major turning points in the market. You want to look at major areas where the banks did business. Okay, because let me explain something. If the market's going up, who can stop the market? Who's stopping the market if the market's going up? You, me, remember, top 90%, right? Let's just remember what we, let's always bring it back home to why this is important, right? 
always bring it back home to why do we trust this information? Why do we look at this information? Okay. So what I want to do is I just want to point out key areas in the market. Okay. And, and it's really easy for us to do this because when you take a look at it from a view like this, it's really hard to see what's going on. If you just go out here like this and just every morning you just take your chart. Okay. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to grab what we call profile manuals and I'm going to draw multiple profiles. Okay. Draw multiple profiles. So I'm going to just go down here and I'm going to say, okay, there was a sector. Actually, before I do that, I want to just draw sections in the market where it's important for us. This is a pretty important level. The market stopped here and turned up and it ripped all the way up to the moon. Okay. This is a pretty important level up here. Pretty important. The market stopped there. Yes. Okay. Pretty important levels. You could take every major turning point, major turning point, not the small ones, the major ones. Okay. This is a pretty major turning point. Okay. And let's just go back here. Let's just go back to this day, first and foremost, right there. Okay. If we just take yesterday, we always need to work from yesterday's information because we don't have today's when it's happening until it happens. So if I just take a look at those three, three, three areas, I could also say that this is a pretty significant area too. This is more of a consolidation area that ended up breaking out. You can see that, like we had a big consolidation we pushed out. So let's just take what we call the manual profile tool. And I'm gonna draw profiles over those areas. Okay, so let's now remember. So remember, I asked you. Remember what I asked you earlier. I said, "What's important? What's important for liquidity?" High volume or low volume data? High volume. Okay, I'm just making sure you're with me, guys. I'm just taking major areas of the market, guys. Major areas, that's it. That's all that matters to me is the major areas. I wanna, show, I wanna demonstrate a concept. This is gonna change the way you look at the market. High volume node from here to here, okay? Let's go down now. Let's go back and find this area here. High volume node. Yes, this was tested here. A little bit dangerous to trade on the way back down, but we'll go back and talk about that later. This one here, major turning point in the market. Where was the high volume node in here? Major turning point in the market. Now we're gonna go back to today or this day here. And we're just gonna look as price got to these levels. Pretty important reaction. Okay, let's go to the next one. See this one, remember I said, we don't wanna trade tested level. I said, this is gonna be a dangerous level. Look at this, this was tested after they broke out of it. We don't wanna trade tested levels, which is something we talk about in our trading room. We don't trade retested areas. This was retested. So this becomes very dangerous. Very important to make sure that if you're looking at volume, it's fresh, fresh, fresh auction levels. Okay, look at this one. This one was never tested. See, significant reaction from it. Look at this one, never tested. All we did was we looked at the major areas of the market and we went in and wrapped volume around it. <laughs> like literally super simple to do. Let's go back and do it again. And I'll show you another example of how this can be done on any market, any time frame. Let's just go to the end of yesterday. And if I just look at the turning points, these two were still in play. 
This one was still in play. We never touched it yet. And this one was still in play. And if we're coming in here, the major turning points that I see would be this one here, this one here, and this one here. Those are major turning points. Major areas that the market stopped and created massive change of direction. So if I go into those areas and I just look at how the market responded to those, I take my manual volume profile tool, okay, draw multiple profiles, wrap my lines around that, wrap my lines around that, and around here, You can go in, you can move it a little bit. I can just extend these levels a bit if I wanted to. Just realistically, just do that. Okay. And then every time price got up to the point of controls of those areas, I don't know if it did or not. I can't remember if it touched this one or not. I don't think it got up there. Remember it today got rejected off the wall. Those levels never got tested. Those point of controls, the yellow, not the VWAPs, not the other, but the yellow lines are very significantly important. When we get back up to those areas, we're going to get reactions from those price points. Okay. Does everybody, did you learn something from this? Because this is all about going into the most important places of the market and assessing the nodes that are dictating the liquidity. It's about dictating the liquidity. Are you learning from this, guys? Give me a yes, you guys are with me. We've already covered an hour, okay? Uh, when I say major turning points, I don't mean swing points. I mean points that move the market. So. When, when we go into this, let's go back here. So let's go to bullet point number three. For finding manual profile locations, look for major impact areas that price had strong reactions from, okay? Then, Draw manual profiles and locate the point of controls. That, those are going to be trades, okay? <laughs> and this one here, same thing. Locate POCs. Don't worry, I'm giving you guys a cheat sheet. We're going to wrap this all together. It's going to be a strategy cheat sheet for you guys. Uh, well, no, not necessarily, because let's say you're trading today, and let's say, uh, let's say you're trading up here, right? And we had the Globex open, and you come into the market, and it's like 4 in the morning. Let's say you're trading in the overnight session, or let's say it's 9 in the morning. We'll use this for an example, right? Let's say you're trading up here. We can already see that this was a significant turning point. This was a significant turning point. This was from yesterday, and this was from this morning. So what you can do is you can do that, and you can rip those lines in there, and you can see how price reacted. Now, you can see price came into this area. Guaranteed there's a point of control that it reacted to that. We can, I shouldn't say guaranteed. Let me show you. Take the manual tool. This is why I love it. Draw multiple profiles. Let's just wrap our volume around that. Map and we'll map our volume around this down at the lows. See the point of control is sitting right up there. <laughs> what happened at the yellow lines? You tell me. I'm not the one making this up. What happened at the yellow lines? No, this is not for every hour. This is manual profiles. I'm drawing these wherever I choose to find major turning points. So remember I just said that, Richard. I said uh, it says for finding manual profile locations, look for major impact areas that price had strong reactions from. So price had a very strong reaction from this level. Came down there. Uh well, that's a good question too. How do you how do you know how to draw them? Um, it's really about kind of just looking at the area and saying, okay, where was? You could literally just take the entire cluster of analysis. Realistically, I mean, you could like this to me was a little bit easier to define because it's a small it's a small area. 
right? This over here, I would probably take the I would take the I would take the lows. Try to get as much of the lows as possible because that's where the market stopped. I know that's a little bit subjective because it's a crowded area, right? But even if we just took the lows, I would just try to draw that. Okay. And if you have a hard time defining it, don't take the trade. Like if you have a, like to me, I could say right here, this is really easy for me to see that this pivot was a strong reaction in the market. Okay. So if I go in here and I want to draw that manual profile in here, and let's just draw this together here. So draw manual profiles. If I want, I, I, just, I want to take the entire pivot. Like, like to me, it's really the point of control. So you can see, you can try to see where, if, if you're drawing it like this and you're bringing this around, look at the volume point of control in there. It's not really moving much, is it? It doesn't matter how much you're moving the box. The point of control didn't really move, did it? So therefore, that point of control is a significant price point. See up here, like if I draw this, if I change how much I draw, like look, I'm moving this box, where did that point of control stay? It stayed up at the top. So even if I took all of this area, the most important part is this up here anyways. That's the whole point. Okay. Let's get back on track here, guys. And let's get back into the discussion. Did you learn something from manual profiles? So this one is for full auctions. Okay, so let's just write that down. This is point of controls all must be located from prior day auctions above all. This is, this is for the full auction. If using interval profiles, you can set the volume. For finding manual profile locations, perfect. I'm giving you guys a strategy cheat sheet today. We're moving into micro volume everything we've done up until up until just the manual profiles has been kind of macro in nature 60 minute profiles are still macro in nature micro volume is about understanding the the interjection of smaller time frame profiles now here's the problem with micro volume is that you have volume on a very small perspective so volume on a very small perspective is rendered insignificant so really what we would do is we would want to use the volume only at what we call areas of interest. So if I've got a resistance level or a support level, I would only be paying attention to the volume inside of the candles whenever we got to an area for us to assess the volume. Because everything in between is considered noisy. We don't really want to use the noise because it can become a disadvantage, it can become a disadvantage to us. So what we do in this regard is I don't really pay attention to all of the volume data inside the bar. What I'm more concerned about is the clusters. Now the cluster is the bulk of volume. The bulk of volume includes the point of control and the two single-handed most volume points next to it. So when we talk about clusters, I'm gonna go into the chart for a second. I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So I'm gonna remove all this down. A cluster is when you go into the bar volume profile. Okay, now we gotta go back, we gotta go back over to the print section. So the print section is where we have the volume profile. So we're gonna go back into the print section for a second and we're gonna turn off all of the print from yesterday. I wanna go back into this and turn this off here for a second. Block trades off. So inside of the order flow side of things, there's a section called bar volume profile. Now, the reason we have to use it under the order flow side of things is because we're looking at tick data. When you use volume profile on a micro level, you have to be using tick data. On the other side, when we were just looking at the other types of volume analysis, you can use the minute feeds. We have a, a setting inside the indicators that will allow you to choose whether you wanna drive the, no, the information from a minute feed or a volume feed. And that's the whole purpose of that. It's really about understanding how to, how to decide, are you gonna use the micro volume settings or the bigger picture volume? If you're looking at micro volume, essentially what we're doing is we're looking at intrabar analysis. And inside of the bars, I can turn on all of the, the volume data, okay? You can see that I've just basically put a bunch of rainbows in my candles, right? I'm looking at all the volume data. Now, what that means is I have 
a value rate of high, a value rate of low, a point of control, a VWAP, and then we get what these little black sections are. These little black sections are the most important part in my experience. So when we go into these things, I'm gonna turn off all of this information, okay? Uh, let's go here and turn on this, and let's just that. These black little chunks of volume are significant. Like they're very, very, very important because this is as small as you can ever get doing volume analysis. Like you can't get any smaller than a bar by bar volume study. <laughs> the only thing less than a bar by bar volume study is the study of latency, <laughs> which is how fast you can get things to come to your platform. <laughs> it doesn't get any more micro in nature as a bar by bar volume study. And the reason this is important is because Whenever you get to areas in the market, like I want you to take a look at, I just wanna start right here, okay? That, but we're already on tick. Okay, we're already on tick feed. You can't have volume in a bar unless you're using tick data. Yeah, even though we're on a minute feed, we're running tick data inside of this. So let me kind of explain this for a second. If price goes up and down and up, and down. This is an area of interest because the market's changing direction. This is an area of interest because the market's changing direction. This is an area of interest because the market's changing direction. Hey, not a problem, Richard. Yep. When you come into this area, okay, when you come into this area, this is becoming a resistance area. This is becoming a support area. This is becoming a resistance area. What I want you to do is I want you to take a look at what's going on on these three candles. It's called rotating volume. When you have major areas in the market that are being respected, you're going to see a shift of the volume. And so if I have a level of support and prices are coming down, prices are coming down, prices stay there, prices lift out of here, you're gonna see a shift of volume that's gonna happen, that's gonna tell you that this volume is being respected that this area is being respected. And I, I really think that you gotta be careful with micro volume analysis because micro volume analysis is, is micro. It means it's always about knowing that you need to know when to apply it versus when not to apply it. And so if I go in here and just take a look at this, I can turn on what we call uh, cluster signals. And what a cluster signal is, is we just have a signal that identifies those volume shifts. So instead of you having to do this manually, we have an actual trading signal that, that, that this happens. And, and it will basically show you a buy or a sell environment when those rotations are happening. So let's kind of give you an example. If you look here, you can see that the, there's a three bar signal and a two bar signal that I've highlighted on these charts. And really what's happening is we're getting shifts in the volume rotations and then prices following through. So what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll actually show you this. We're gonna go in and we're gonna just turn these on. So let's go here and turn the volume signals on. And right there. So you're gonna see that these are key important, important situations. Now I, I wanna turn the two bar off, not interested in the two bar, I'm only interested in the three bar signals. I don't like the two bar. Three bar is the, three bar is the, the, the gravy, two bars is the noise. So the three bar is significant, okay? And, and I like to look at it from a directional perspective. Like if I'm looking at a directional market, I'm paying attention to the direction of the volume. So if I know that I've got a downtrend here, okay, we got, higher highs, boom, 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 structure down, okay, boom, structure down, boom, structure down, boom. I'm paying attention to the volume shifts on the way down. Price changes direction here, structures up, 
I'm paying attention to the volume shifts on the way up. Structure's up, big volume shift, rotation up. Because what's happening is it's signaling that the volume is shifting on the bars where the market's giving you the turning points. Now, my suggestion, and this is just my own experience talking because I built this tool, is for when using volume clusters, use them at areas of interest and preferably on fixed range bars like range, Renko, and tick. If using on time or volume charts, which are variable range, Okay, what do I mean by variable range? It means that every bar is significantly got maybe a different size to it, right? Like if every single candle is the same size, like a range bar, every single bar is the same size, okay? Then you would be able to trade these signals as a signal system. But if you're using it on say a time chart where one bar is like this and another bar is like this, you're not gonna enter on the signal. You're gonna use the volume shift for confirmation because the bars are gonna signal the shift at the close of the bar. So what you wanna do is you just wanna make sure that when using the volume clusters, use them at areas of interest. If using on time variable range, use for confirmation at levels. Use for signals. Does that make sense guys? Because volume on a micro level, if I have this on a range chart, I could enter at the bar close as a trading system. You could literally, we're going to be, we're automating this actually. In fact, next week when we run out the automation with our easy algo, uh, you'll be able to automate these. Our, our, our easy algo will be able to, to plug into this and we can automate the volume. Next week's significant, guys. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna want to uh, pay attention to the emails. We're, we're, we're rolling out our automation. Uh, tool set and everything that we do from signals um, that produce signals that yesterday's events and all that are going to be discussed next week too. So let's kind of stay on topic here for a second because volume cluster analysis is, is very, is very unique. Okay. And the big thing for me here, okay. The big thing for me and, and, and kind of where I want to shift the, the conclusion of today's uh, webinar focus is what we consider volume divergence. Okay, and we're going to go in here and I'm going to turn off the, the bar volume profile and I turn all this stuff off. And we're going to go in here, volume cluster, volume divergence. Okay, perfect. Okay. So we're going to leave it at that. Uh, let's, let's go in here and I'll talk about what volume divergence is. So volume divergence is one of the, my favorite topics to discuss. And volume divergence is, we actually have a signal that detects when you actually have uh, price and volume moving in opposing directions. And remember what I said about micro and macro, okay? I'm going to make a little section here on volume divergence. Actually, I have a section. I'm going to let you guys take a screenshot of it on here. Um, volume divergence is when price is going up, okay, and then it flips and volume stops at the highs or the lows. So if you take a look at this, like this candle here, this candle traded up and then flipped because of this volume. This candle traded up and then flipped because of that volume. That volume is what stopped this candle from going further. This candle came down and flipped because the volume stopped. You can see here, you can see the volume stops the market from going in those directions. It's the volume that is leading the price. So when the volume steps in at the, the highs and the lows of the bar and price rejects from that volume, it's because volume has absorbed price direction 
and it's caused a reversal. So this is a very significant concept that I really think you should pay very close attention to, especially when using it on bigger timeframes, okay? Um, because it's actually a trading system. In fact, I'm probably gonna develop a trading system even after today's webinar on, on uh, interval, interval profiles <laughs> because uh, the, the, the strategy earlier today that we talked about with the 60, the 60 minute profile charts is, is also very powerful. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll do a summary of that here as well. And I'll probably do another webinar on that you know, following this boot camp because I really think it needs to be discussed in more detail. But today's focus, I want to end the boot camp with a system, a trading system. And uh, the reason I decided to bring this trading system to this event was because I had a student of ours, after teaching him this in our, um, in our, in our programs, in our masterminds, in our, in our courses, he was uh, he, he's very he's a very he's a very uh, uh, intelligent person, and I I you know I did not even ask him to do this. I just taught him the concept, and I a week later he sent me. <laughs> I, I don't know I think he sent me and Jeff Jeff's our product specialist. He sent us an email with all of his back testing, and he went in and he was back testing volume divergence on on the markets that he was looking at, and it was just amazing what he had found. He said, Sean, he's like, I've never seen such accuracy. I've never seen this, right? Now, that was for the markets that he was looking at it on, and it was also for the timeframes he was looking on. But it's, it's a very powerful concept because you got to understand what's causing the reversals in the market. It's actually volume driven. It's a volume driven system. It's not an indicator driven system. So the reason this is important is because I want to give you the strategy that I taught him because if you find merit in it, which you should, I think it can really make some big difference in people's trading. Um, the main focus here is I want to keep it super simple. Very simple. It, it, the simplest strategies are the best strategies, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to identify the direction of the market. So the first thing is we're going to identify the direction of the market, okay? It's only going to be directional. So we're only going to be looking at directional strategies, not non-directional. So you're not going to be trading reversals. You're going to be trading trends. Okay. The area of interest is going to be the volume divergence. Okay. So the focus of this strategy is volume divergence. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to identify the areas. We're going to move down into step two and I'm going to go down. We're going to draw the locations for the volume divergence. Our software signals them, like our software shows you where they are. So you can go in and take a look at them. But there's two ways to trade volume divergence. One of them as a signal system and the other one as a level system. Today we're gonna talk about it as a level system and then I'll do another event on it as signal system when we do the easy algo, okay? So once we have the direction, and once we know the levels from the divergence, we're gonna talk about how to take the trade, okay? Are you guys with me? Give me a, a yes that this makes sense to you. And I know that it's a pretty big event. It's, it's a boot camp event. So I know that our brains are probably getting a bit tired and our eyes are like, God, he's just showed me so much information. Have you learned something? Hmm. <coughs> Michael says, I'm Johnny on it. Uh, Adrian says, yes, sir. Okay. That's important because when, when, I, when I was in school years ago, after two hours, I was begging for the water fountain. <laughs> but the point of this is that you leave here feeling like this is some, some really great stuff that you, you learned a lot from. Okay. So this is the strategy overview. The strategy overview is that you can actually do this on higher time frames and smaller time frames. Okay. And the difference is the objective of your trade, really. It's if you want to spend time doing it on bigger time frames or smaller time frames, you can. You can also do it on range bars or volume bars or time based bars. Okay. But the point of the matter is, is that it's all the same. So it doesn't matter if you're doing it on time charts, volume charts, tick charts, range charts, it doesn't matter. Volume divergence is volume divergence, okay? 
And the premise for this trade is that we locate on those time charts or any type of charts, the volume cluster divergence, okay? And this is where the volume shifts to the lows or the highs of the bars to stop price. Now I want you to take a look at this. I'm giving you guys a golden gem here because this is something that we teach in our paid programs. I'm giving you a free strategy that is actually traded by real traders that is taught in our paid programs. I'm trying to help you guys out here so that you guys can understand the power of what we're teaching because I really do think that it has a lot of merit. And you can trade this directionally or non-directionally. New traders, stick to directional trading. Please just stick to the trend first, okay? Now, what I wanna do is I wanna show you an example of what this is, okay? This is a long setup. Okay, what this, and this is on a 30 minute chart. You can do this on any chart, any time frame, anything you want. You locate volume divergence. Do you see how the volume is stuck at the bottom of the bars? Price reversed. This is a 30 minute chart. Another hour has passed. On that 30 minute candle, price came down to touch the volume cluster. This is a two minute chart showing the reaction from a scalping time frame. Now you can do this on just a smaller time frame, or you can do this on a two time frame breakdown. Either way, it's kick butt. Okay. And I'll show you another example of a short. This is a 30 minute volume divergence, okay? Volume divergence stuck at the highs. One, two, three, four, five, six candles times 30, that's 180 minutes. Yes? Three times six, 180 minutes, yes. 180 minutes. Price got there, short. Okay. Now you don't need to trade it on two different time frames. You can trade it on one. You can trade on both. Okay. But let's go in and show you an example on a five minute. Okay. Let's go in and show you an example on a five minute. This is a three minute. I'm going to put it to a five minute. Let's just go find some. Give it a second to load, guys. I'm loading a five minute chart of order flow data here. And uh, we'll take a look at it. There it is, okay. So a couple things here. Let's just go back. The first rule is you need a significant drop in price and it needs to be fresh. So I'm gonna write some rules down here that you need to, need to, need to remember these rules, okay. Five, volume, div, strategy locate volume divergence okay the next step is make sure it's fresh untested third rule is make sure there was a significant move in price pretty simple no like like you need to make sure there was a significant move in price and it was never tested. Does everybody understand that? I'm gonna teach you what that means. Let's go over here. Let's take a look at these volume divergences, okay? The direction is down. Direction is down. So remember I said, just trade with the direction. Keep it super, super simple. If you don't know the direction, put the averages on your chart. Directions down, okay? Super simple, super simple. You don't know the trend, put the averages on your chart. You can see the direction of the price is below the averages, trend averages are down. But I'm gonna keep it super simple and I'm just going to explain a few things. If I know I'm looking for shorts because the direction is down, I'm looking for the VDS signals these VDS signals. These are called volume divergence signals. These are little diamonds that are software plots. So you don't have to figure out where the divergence is. You just need to turn the signal on. You go into the, you go into the setting up here, okay? 
It's volume profile, volume divergence on or off. Very simple little tool, okay? Very easy for you guys. Then all we're doing is we're going in and after every signal, okay, we got a volume divergence. In order for me to want to plan a trade on this bar, I need two things to happen. I need to make sure that when the next candle comes, okay, hold the questions, guys. Let me teach the strategy. We'll go into those questions after. At, this, at the time of this, I need to make sure that price doesn't come up and touch this. And if it does open, I need to see a drop really hard from here. If price comes up to touch the volume or if price just sits here flatlining, this candle's no good for me. Because volume divergence is always only good if it's fresh and untested, which means price can't touch it on the next bar, and then price has to have a significant move from the volume. The volume needs to make an impact. Okay? So price touched it on the next bar. That candle's invalid. Let's keep going. We're looking for shorts. Don't pay attention to the long right now. Right here. So if I get another short right here, two things need to happen. I need to see that on the next candle, this candle close here, it has to drop right here from here. If it doesn't drop right here from here and it comes up to test this or it just sits here flatline, then that's no good for me, okay? Touched it right away. That's not valid. Does everybody start to see that? Like, because a lot of times what's going to happen is we get these volume divergences, price is going to come up and retest it right away. Price is going to come up and retest it right away. Price tests it right away. Price touches it. Like, volume divergence is not meant to be traded on every signal. It's only meant to be traded on the most important impact. And I'm going to explain how to see it very simple. Let's keep going. We're looking for shorts. We've got another short opportunity. You're not going to be without trading opportunities. The only thing you need to do is make sure you pick the right one. And the right one is very simple to see. The next bar has to be a big drop in price. This was tested. Do you see it? Tested on the next bar. Can't trade it. Moving on. There was a big drop here, and this is very important. If this was not tested, I would be drawing my lines right here, and I'd be looking to short that. But you can see it's been tested. So that's no trade. Watch what happens. Going on. Moving on to the next bar. Next one, next one, next one, next one, next one. What happened here? <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Market opens, flush to the highs, volume steps in, huge reaction. On the next candle, price drop never touched it. We had a pretty strong drop in price. Watch what happens here. You can see it. And I did not trade the S&P on the five minute today. I didn't even look at it. I'm just telling you that's the setup. That is the setup, and it is a sexy trade. <laughs> it is a very high probability trade, and it is a trade that back tests very well. It's easy to see it. Our software identifies the golden nugget. All you need to make sure is that the price drops heavy from the volume and doesn't test it on the next bar. Two very simple rules to take that trade, and you want to do that with the direction of the market. You want to trade it with the direction. This one here. <laughs> this one here is not fresh. You want to know why? Because we come back into the volume on the next bar. It's not a good idea to do that. You want to make sure you have a big drop in price. See how it trades through it? No, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. Waiting, for the direction is down, waiting for a short. Take a look at all these little divergences in here. These little divergences, price is touching them right away. Price is touching them right away. We don't touch that. We want to see divergence with big drops. Okay, now watch this one. If this candle drops right away on the next bar, we would have a trade. There we do. We have a trade. Okay, perfect. Let's go in here. That's a level of opportunity for us. If we get back to it, same thing here. Look at this. <laughs> this is dangerous. This is a dangerous trade. It's a borderline trade. It's a borderline trade. It's a very aggressive one because price tried to come up and test it here. I don't know if this one would hold the stop. See, it comes right in here. 
it's going to try to blow through a little bit. Yeah, I told you it's dangerous. You want to know why it's dangerous? Because price is coming up to test the volume on the next bar. Do you see it? Comes up to test it. That's a test of volume. We don't touch that. This one here is a little bit dangerous too because it's, it's a little bit tested. And this is very, very important that we make sure we don't try to trade tested levels. This one here touched it. See, every time you got a level on the next area like this that comes right into the volume, every time it comes up to test that volume, you don't touch the divergence. Did everybody understand that? See this one here? If we were going along, this one never tested it. <laughs> very, very, very important that if you have an opportunity for volume divergence, that you pay attention if volume has been attempted to be tested because if it's been tested, it's been used up. Take a look at this. If we were going along, this is a sexy trade. Like if we were going along, this is so freaking sexy that I would just, I would load up into this level. And if you take a look, right? We're in an uptrend, right? That volume divergence is there. If price comes back down to test that, that's a sexy trade. I don't know if price even touched it. No, price didn't touch it. So if it's still fresh, that level's fresh coming into the, into the next day. So if you're looking at the S&P, that's still a sexy trade right there. At 33.25, there's still a brand new fresh trade off the open. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy the Globex on Sunday night. The market will come to test that on Sunday night. <laughs> you see that right there. All you do is you wrap lines around the cluster. I'll tell you how to draw them. You come in and you draw your, your lines. I normally go in one tick above. Okay, just like this. Sexy trade. The best trade was off the open today. The best trade was off the open on the S&P. Okay, now I'm just showing you examples of this because you can do this on a 30 minute too. Okay, we can do this on a much bigger time frame, a 15 minute, a five minute. Let's go to the 15 minute chart and see if there's any, any big divergence in here that happens. Now it takes a second to load it. <laughs> you missed day one, Valerie. Tell it, everybody in here, is, is day one important to watch? <laughs> <laughs> There's a really big trade here on the the S and P on the 15 minute. Is a really big. See, look at this. This came up to test it. We did not get there. Look at this volume diver. This is a, it's one of my most favorite setups, right here. That would be considered a test. I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> it just couldn't get there. Take a look at this though. This was the 15 minute. This is important. This one never came up to test it. Look, this one closed. We did not get up into that wick. We did not get up into that wick at all, right? I always use the wick as a guiding point. I'm like, did we get into the wick of price? Because that's kind of like the area of volume that's rejecting the market. <laughs> uh, Wayne, we'll have to check, brother. I haven't rolled over, buddy, but... Uh... Spent most of the day prepping for the event, but what we'll do here is we'll just take a look at this. That's the volume divergence on the 15 minute. Okay, right here. Price came down. See how this one tested on the next bar? It's not valid. There it is. There's the trade. There's a the reaction. That's enough for a day trade. That's a 15 minute chart. No, that's uh, 3338 all the way down to 3324. I mean, I don't know how much you're looking for every on every trade, but. <laughs> the cluster almost always includes the point of control. So if I go in here and turn on the point of control. Except for this one didn't. Almost always. You can see the cluster almost always. And that's why this one stopped there. You see that? The price came in to test the POC. <laughs> You've, what, what do you guys notice here? What do you guys notice a theme around some of the stuff that I've been teaching here? What, what is the theme? So draw your lines. Trade with direction. Okay. <laughs> I want you to take a screenshot of this. 
it's 10 years of my 10 years of my knowledge guys i'm just puking it out on you <laughs> i'm just trying to give it to you they they say there's a there's a there's a there's an old proverb i don't know if it's a if it's in the bible or if it's in the if it's the monks say it or what but it's basically you can't keep what you have unless you give it away 